Hey, I'm back. Like vertebrae. <laughs> Time for another 2019 official Uncle Lou team preview and prediction. We've done three of these so far, I guess. So well on our way. Only another, what, 40 or 50 to do? Uh, I've created a playlist that has uh, all of these uh, official previews and predictions in them. I'm going to add all the videos to it as I do them. I'll put a link somewhere up here to that playlist. If you've missed any of the teams we've done so far and you want to get caught up on them or you're wondering which teams I've done, just click that link. It'll take you to the playlist and you can see what's already on there. All right, I'm going to be honest with you. The team today, I, this is the hardest one I've had to do so far. I ran into a problem doing this schedule uh, or doing this uh, prediction. When I got to a certain point in the schedule, I'll talk more about it when we put the schedule up on the screen and I get there. But up today, the Oklahoma Sooners. Sorry about that. I was on a step mill. <laughs> hey, good morning, it's Uncle Lou here. Yeah, that's right, it's me, Uncle Lou, and I'm live for you on YouTube today, so thanks for watching. Man, I sure do appreciate it also, and too, in addition to that as well. We just passed 19,000 subscribers, I think it was yesterday. Big shout out to you guys for all the help. I, I, I normally don't ask uh, you guys to do things like share the videos and stuff like that, but over the last couple of weeks, I have been asking in every other video or so, if you guys would pick one of your favorites and share it to try to help me hit my goal of getting to 20,000 subscribers by the start of the season. And a lot of you have been doing that and we're well on the way, like I mentioned, surpassing the 19,000 mark yesterday. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. Subscribe to this channel if you're not already. I post college football videos almost every single day of the year. And sometimes, like today, for example, they're even watchable. Give this video a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. Doesn't cost you anything. Doesn't take you any time at all, but it's a huge help to me. Give it a thumbs up. All right, here we go. Oklahoma Sooners uh, 2019, the official Uncle Lou uh, preview and prediction. Going to do this video the same way we've done the other ones. Uh, don't forget, you're going to disagree with a lot of what I say here. That's fine. Call in show tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern. We do it every Tuesday and Thursday. Feel free to give me a call if you're an Oklahoma fan. Tell me where I'm wrong. But uh, anyway... Uh, we'll briefly recap last season, and then we'll move on to 2019. Uh, how'd you do last year? 11-1 and one in the regular season uh, with a loss to Texas. Now, how does that compare to uh, my prediction of Oklahoma from last offseason? Well, I'll put the ending screen of last offseason's Oklahoma prediction up on the screen, and we'll see how I did. Uh, I had you at 12-0. I wasn't a believer in Texas last year, at least not to the point of beating you guys. Now, I, I did have Texas, I think, going 9-3. and three, And isn't that what they ended up going? And I had you guys uh, playing in a rematch in the Big 12 title game. That's what ended up happening. Of course, you did uh, you did win that game. But uh, I just thought Texas would be too inconsistent to beat you last year. I was wrong. They beat you in a close game. You got revenge in the Big 12 title game. So congratulations there. But yeah, I had you at 12-0. and 0. You finished 11-1 and 1 with the regular season loss to uh, to Texas. All right. And then of course, uh, you won the big 12 title game. Like I mentioned in a revenge game against Texas, made the college football playoffs for the umpteenth year in a row and lost in the first round for the umpteenth year in a row. Cause you have no defense. You lost to Bama 45 to, uh, was it 34, something like that. Game wasn't really that close. In my opinion, Alabama was up huge in this game in the first half. And they sort of put it into cruise control there. Not to take anything away from Oklahoma. You guys fought hard in that game. You never gave up. You came back in the second half and actually made it a pretty interesting game. So uh, that's not a shot at you or whatever. It was a pretty, pretty interesting game, especially compared to the other playoff game we got, uh, which was Notre Dame showing up somewhere yet again where they didn't belong and getting absolutely ran out of the building uh, by the Taters. All right, let's talk about your offense first because it takes longer. doesn't take long at all to talk about Oklahoma's defense. We'll start with your offense. 
great offense, prolific offense, uh, one of the best offenses year in and year out in all of college football. A lot of years lately, the best offense in all of college football. Two back-to-back -back, uh, Heisman winning quarterbacks, Baker Mayfield two seasons ago, Kyler Murray last season. The numbers Kyler Murray put up last year were just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, he's gone off to the NFL. So yet again, third season in a row under Lincoln Riley, uh, third new quarterback. Per usual for Oklahoma, you bring in a transfer. How long has it been since a quarterback that was actually recruited and signed out of high school to Oklahoma won a game as the starting quarterback at Oklahoma? How long has it been? Five years? Six years? Seven years? Uh, Oklahoma seems to be the Auburn of the Big 12. Uh, you know, Gus Malzahn can't win a game, can't do anything meaningful unless he's got a, a decent transfer quarterback going all the way back to Cam Newton in 2010, Nick Marshall in 2013, Jarrett Stidbaloney the last two seasons. Now, you've signed some quarterbacks, Oklahoma has, but apparently you didn't have all that much faith or confidence in them in terms of starting this year because you bring Jalen Hurts in, grad transfer from Alabama, uh, one of the most coveted, uh, definitely the most uh, high profile of a series of high profile quarterback transfers that we had after last season. Jalen Hurts, of course, spent a few years at Alabama, uh, started a couple of those years going 26 and two, lost his starting job at halftime of the national title game a couple of seasons ago to Tua Tamagi Aguiaga. Uh, Hertz played a lot last year, played in every game last year, a lot of mop up time in the second half. But then, of course, in the SEC championship game, the flip was, uh, script was kind of flipped from the previous season. Georgia had a huge lead over Tobago Baga Baga at halftime. Saban makes the switch yet again, second year in a row, this time bringing Hertz in. Uh, in the second half, and we know the, the we know the rest. We know what happened. Bama came back and won the game, but Jalen Hurts leading the offense. So you bring him in to run your offense this year in sort of a transitional year before you uh, move on to try an actual quarterback that you signed out of high school, unless you change your mind again and bring another transfer in next year. But Spencer Rattler's there, a couple other guys coming in. You're not hurting for quarterbacks, uh, that's for sure. I mean, if, if, if you're going to pick one bright spot on Oklahoma's offense out of a bunch of bright spots, it would be the quarterback position. Running backs, uh, you can say what you want about Big 12 defenses, and Lord knows I do. Your running back situation is legit. I mean, you've got a couple of running backs that would start or get a ton of playing time no matter where they played, no matter the team, no matter the conference. Uh, Trey Sermon and Kennedy Brooks. I'm higher on Kennedy Brooks, and that's not to take anything away from Trey Sermon. Trey Sermon is a great running back and will probably get a chance in the NFL. Kennedy Brooks, though, uh, First of all, Rodney Anderson, man, what a tragedy. I, I, Rodney Anderson was one of my favorite players in all of college football two seasons ago. A string of injuries for that guy. I hate that for him. He, he was so much fun to watch. Kennedy Brooks could give you that. I, I mean, this, this dude, if you don't watch a lot of Oklahoma football, or if you do watch it, but you sort of casually watch it so you're paying attention maybe to their Heisman quarterbacks or something, Watch an Oklahoma game this year and, and specifically concentrate on their running backs. Kennedy Brooks in particular, freshman All-American last year, over a thousand yards. This guy is the real deal. I think he's the best running back on your team. Again, that's not to take anything away from Trey Sermon. And Oklahoma, like a lot of other teams that have multiple elite running backs, both of these guys are going to play a ton. So like last year, Trey Sermon led your team in touchdowns in terms of running backs. Uh, but uh, Kennedy Brooks uh, had more yards. So they're both going to play a lot. Y you got other guys that are going to play too. I I'm not here to name your entire roster, but these are the two running backs that stand out to me, particularly Kennedy Brooks. The guy's the real deal. Wide receiver, per usual, you lose a few and you have a few coming back. C.D. Lamb's coming back. He's a playmaker, great wide receiver, great hands, run good routes. Uh, I really like this guy. Over 1,000 yards last year and 11 touchdowns. I think he had almost 1,200 yards actually, 11 touchdowns. Uh, second team, Big 12. That just goes to show you the, the talent at wide receiver in the Big 12. And on the other hand, sort of the lack of defensive talent. You had a guy with 1,200 yards receiving that was second team, Big 12. Amazing. Georgia has uh, Georgia's never had a receiver get 1,158 yards. We had 1,000-yard receiver. It was A.J. Green in history. Um, so... Uh, when we're a different kind of offense, historically, I get it. But still, it's just amazing to me <clears throat> as a Georgia fan that a guy can have almost 1,200 yards receiving. It's not even enough to be all first team in his conference. Unbelievable. This C.D. Lamb's the real deal. Oklahoma fans, you already know that. 
And I think you have the best tight end in the Big 12, too. This Cal Camara. I'm probably saying his name wrong, but, you know, I didn't name him. So um, it's not really my responsibility or my fault if I say it wrong. Um, you know, you, 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 you come up with these complicated last names and then you get upset if people say them wrong. I don't know what to tell you. Those are the bright spots on your offense. Question marks is going to be on the offensive line, right? You lose four of your five starters. Center is uh, Your center comes back. Now, he was hurt in the spring, missed all of spring. Uh, if you were going to have a lineman hurt in the spring, though, center's probably the one because he already has all the experience. It's the other four that are sort of the question marks. Now, Oklahoma recruits great on the offensive side of the ball. Everyone knows that. And they've had several uh, NFL offensive linemen over the last few years, and they have some on the team this year. The only question mark about Oklahoma's offensive line is experience, not talent. We'll see how long it takes them to sort of gel and come together as a unit, that kind of thing. Hard to imagine with four new starters, though, that the offensive line will be quite as good as it was last year. But I still think it'll be one of, if not the best offensive lines in the Big 12. All right, defense. Uh, your defense is terrible. It's pitiful. It's abysmal. Uh, for several years, you haven't even tried to do anything uh, defensively. Um, I mean, fundamentals, terrible. Uh, scheme, terrible. Talent level, way below average. Players playing positions they really shouldn't be playing. Um, it, it, I mean, honestly, there's nothing good to say about Oklahoma's defense over the last few years, except for maybe Kenneth Murray. He had like a million tackles last year. Part of that is because I think Kenneth Murray actually is pretty good. The other part of that is that the other 10 players were garbage. I'm sorry, but your defense, the, the fact that Oklahoma can't even field a mid-level defense is absolutely embarrassing. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's not like Oklahoma is one of these like lower tier teams that has invented some new wrinkle offense like like Chip Kelly did with Oregon or, or something, right? And so they're just, you say, well, you don't really expect them to have a good defense. They're only good because this offense is tricking people. Or whatever. No, Oklahoma has been a good team for 75 years. Oklahoma has had some of the best defenses all time in college football. They have put so many players into the NFL. So many All-Americans have come out of Oklahoma. It makes it hard to understand how the defense can be as bad as it has been over the last few years. And just to put this thing in perspective, um, I mean, I'm not making this up. Dead last in pass defense. Dead last in scoring defense. Dead last in total defense. Um, epically bad. Again, this is something that Oklahoma fans don't like hearing from a Georgia fan or any fan of some other team, but it's nothing you can argue. Uh, you all agree with me. It's terrible, uh, and it's got to get better. You kept Stoops around way too long. Most of you knew that. Everyone outside of Oklahoma knew that. You finally make a change. You bring in Alex Grinch. I'm up in the air on Alex Grinch. I think he did okay at Washington State. I think when, when he got to Washington State, they had a terrible defense too. They were ranking in the 90s in total defense. And I think his last year there, which was what, 2017, they were around 20th in total defense. So Washington State's defense did get better during the time that Alex Grinch was there. Uh, in fact, it got so much better that Ohio State decided they needed him, and they went and grabbed him for 2018 and made him co-defensive coordinator. They had two defensive coordinators. What happened to Ohio State's defense in 2018? It went in the toilet. Did, did y'all watch Ohio State play last year? Purdue was still scoring touchdowns on them. Um, so I, I, I don't know. It's hard to, uh, Ohio state had the 16th ranked defense. I think it was in 2017. If I remember right, I forgot to write it down. I did look it up, but I think Ohio state had the 16th ranked defense in 2017. Alex Grinch comes in in 2018 last season, 72nd. Now, Oklahoma fan looks at a defense ranked 72nd and goes, man, I wish we could get there. But Ohio State is the other way around. Uh, Ohio State has, has recruited in the top five every single year. And unlike Oklahoma, they don't only recruit on the offensive side of the ball. They actually recruit elite defensive players. Was, was, was Ohio State's defensive collapse last year Alex Grinch's fault? Not totally, not completely. They had some injuries. Um, their linebackers have been sort of an issue at Ohio State for a couple of years. In fact, they fired their linebacker coach. So I'm not sure you can just blame Alex Grinch for that. But the point is, there, it's, it's sort of a mixed bag in terms of results with Alex Grinch. But you bring him in at Oklahoma. The one thing we do know, 
Well, two things we do know about Oklahoma's defense. It can't get any worse than it was last year, and Alex Grinch is definitely an improvement over Stoops, without question. That guy was absolutely inept uh, in, in terms of running the defense. It was pitiful. Uh, so anyway, that's sort of where you are. I'm not going to mention a whole bunch of your play. You got nine starters back. Kenneth Murray look, is a tackling machine, like I mentioned. Everyone else needs to learn how to play football and tackle people. All right, here we go. I'm going to put the schedule up on the screen. You guys know how we do this. We're going to go through it game by game. I'm going to give you a winner and a loser for every single game. And at the end of this video, we'll come up with a final regular season record for Oklahoma in 2019. Uh, you start off with a couple of uh, actually three non-conference games. Your non-conference schedule is pitiful. Um, you know, you got to do something about this. Start scheduling some real games, please. Tired of people knocking the SEC for not scheduling anybody. Here you go starting off with Houston, South Dakota, and UCLA. Three garbage can programs. Win, win, win. Uh, I do think UCLA will be better this year. Year two under Chip Kelly. Uh, trying to get his parts and pieces in there so he can turn that offense around into that, you know, tricky dicky circus thing he was running up in Oregon. You know, the problem is with the UCLA, and I, I'll make this quick because this isn't a UCLA video, but when Chip Kelly started running that offense at Oregon, no one had really seen it before. I mean, yeah, sure, people had seen hurry-up offenses, but not to the extent Chip Kelly was doing it, right? It's eight, nine, ten years down the road now. Almost half the teams in college football run either that offense or, or they have a package where they can run it at certain times in the game that just go, 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 go. Defenses have sort of figured it out. Um, now, now, if you have elite pieces on the offense, yes, that offense can be elite, but so can a pro style or a spread. So I, I'm just not sure Chip Kelly's going to have anywhere near the level of, of success at UCLA that he was able to achieve at Oregon, but still shouldn't be winning three or four games a year. You got to think they're going to get a little bit better. You do have to play them there. <sighs> I, I, Chip Kelly's offense would have to look like what it looked like at Oregon for them to have any chance in this game, I think, even if Oklahoma's defense is still as bad as we uh, have, seen, have seen it being the last couple of years. I just don't think uh, Chip Kelly at UCLA has the horses there to win a shootout, even if they have the ability to get into a shootout offensively. I think you start off 3-0. and That takes you into your first bye week. Every team has two bye weeks this year. It's not a change in college football or anything. It's just the way the schedule works. In order for the season to start on that uh, Labor Day weekend or whatever like they like to do and then have your conference championship games the first Saturday in December, there's one extra Saturday in between there this year, so they give teams a second bye week. You get your first one after your first three games. Come out of your bye week, you got your first uh, Big 12 game. It's a home game for you against Texas Tech. If there's a team in the Big 12 that tries less at defense than Oklahoma, well, no, there's there's not, uh, but Texas Tech comes close. Their defense is absolutely pitiful. I remember watching Ole Miss versus Texas Tech last year and just basically laughing the entire time because Ole Miss's defense was, ep was epically bad, too. Ole Miss would have fit right into the Big 12 last year, throwing it 70 times a game and uh, not even really sending a defense out onto the field, but uh, you'll get a win there without a problem. Then you go on the road to the fighting Les Miles. Just gotta be chewing a lot of grass in this game, won't he? Yeah. Is, is Les Miles an upgrade at head coach for Kansas? Yes. Um, can Les Miles make Kansas a better team than they have been in the, in the last 10 or 15 years? Yes. Uh, can Les Miles and Kansas beat Oklahoma in year one? No, no, stop it. Uh, listen, it's not like Kansas has been win winning seven or eight games and you're hoping Les Miles can get you to double digits. No, Kansas has been winning zero, one, and two games for a year for what seems like forever. It, so if it, Les Miles working out at Kansas would be Kansas getting five, maybe six wins at some point down the road. That You better not lose this game at Kansas. I got you with a, uh, another win there. That puts you at 5-0. and oh. Red River shootout time, or a Red River rivalry, if you're not allowed to call it that anymore. I call it what I want to. Uh, yeah, Georgia, Florida is the cocktail party, too. So put that in your smoke and pipe it. Pipe, pipe, pipe. Type, type, type. <laughs> Where was I? Texas game. Burr, burr. Uh... Loss. I think Texas beats you again this year in the regular season. Why? Do I think Texas is going 12-0 and and making the playoffs? Uh, spoiler alert. Nope. <laughs> no. Too inconsistent. But one thing Tom Herman can do is get up for big games. This will be a big game. They beat you in the regular season last year. They do have a quarterback coming back. You don't. You've got Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is good. Texas' secondary is better. Uh, listen, Jalen Hurts can run around and cannot throw the ball like... Uh, like Kyler Murray. I'm sorry, he can't. He just can't. 
I also question whether overall your receiver group is as good this year as it has been the last couple of years. I love CeeDee Lamb, and you've got plenty of young talent on that team. I just question overall if the receiving group is as talented as what we've seen the last year or two. Texas secondary is absolutely elite. Their safety duo is probably the best safety tandem in America. Um, they they signed something like oh, oh, they've signed something like four or five top ten defensive backs in America over the last couple of years. Now they're a little bit young at corner, but like I said, extremely talented, and they'll have five six games of experience by the time this Oklahoma game comes around. <sighs> I think they're going to score on you. Uh, Sam Ellinger is going to do his thing. They lose one of their two elite wide receivers, but the, the uh, Humphreys they lose, I guess, Colin Johnson comes back. They need to find a more consistent running game, Texas does. And their defense, listen, their defense sort of took a step back last year, which is weird. And they lose a lot of starters on that defense going into this year. But I do think their defense is going to be more. In, in 2017, Texas defense was like here and the offense was here. In 2018, that sort of flipped. The offense took a big step forward, and the defense sort of regressed a little. I think the offense is going to stay close to where it was last year, and I think the defense is going to uh, take a couple of steps forward. It wouldn't surprise me if Texas is a little bit better this coming year than they were last year. I think they beat you again in the shootout. Home game against West Virginia, uh, an exciting game last year. What was the final score of that one? 170 to 168 or something like that. Won't be the case this year. Wholesale changes at West Virginia. Quarterback, gone. Uh, two best wide receivers, gone. All the coaches, gone. Uh, the two starting safeties entered the transfer portal like five weeks ago. I, I, I don't know. I, weird. Uh, it's going to be a tough year for West Virginia. I got no hate for West Virginia. I mention this all the time. I've got some family or some in-laws that are from there. My father-in-law was born there. Um, so I've got no hate for West Virginia. Uh, one of the best scenes in all of college football, West Virginia home game when they're winning and they, they sing the country roads at the end. I got no hate for West Virginia. A lot of West Virginia fans on this channel, uh, which I appreciate. But let's just be real. It's going to be a rough year for West Virginia in 2019. You're not beating Oklahoma. Uh, I gave the Sooners a win. Then you got to go on the road to Kansas State. Bill Snyder finally gone after 240 years of running that program. They bring in a whole new coaching staff. Not a very good team over the last couple of years. Lost to Vandy a few years ago in a, in a, in a cross-conference matchup or whatever. It is on the road. I, I can't see them beating you. Got to give you another win there. That takes you into your second bye week. You come out of that, and you have what may be your toughest or second toughest game of the year, Iowa State. A lot of people are high on Iowa State this year. I'm way higher on Iowa State's coach than I am on Iowa State. They do have a good quarterback. There's Brock Purdy, I think is his name. He's the real deal. He's really good. Second or third best quarterback in the Big 12, I think, in my opinion. But you get him at home. Isn't that good news? Yeah. Uh, if you don't ask anybody, but you can't beat Iowa State at their place. It's impossible. You might as well just forfeit the game. You might as well do like Florida and pretend it's going to rain a half an inch and, and cancel it for safety reasons. Um, I don't know what else to say about Iowa State. You get them at home, and boy, is that a lucky break for Oklahoma or anybody for that matter. Does anybody remember the last time Iowa State even lost a game at home? Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. But anyway, the point remains, you get them at home. Lucky for you. I do think they're a good team. I think this could be a close game, and I would not be shocked. This is where the schedule started to get hard for me with Oklahoma. I'm not going to lie, and I'm going to explain why in just a second, but let me just wrap up with, with Iowa State here. I gave you a win. All right, your last three games of the season, and really your last four, if you want to include Iowa State. Iowa State at home, at Baylor, TCU at home, at Oklahoma State. Here's my issue. When I break down each all four of these games individually, I feel like Oklahoma wins them, which would, of course, put you at 11 and 1, matching what you did last year, exactly the same. A loss to Texas and 11 wins. Here's my problem I really don't think Oklahoma is going 11 and 1 this year. I think they're going 10 and 2. But see, I try to avoid that when I do these previews. It's real easy to just uh, say, uh, hey, what's. Uh, what, what, what's uh, Florida's record going to be this year? Oh, it's going to be 9-3. and three. That's easy. Find the three losses, though, right? And, and that's just an example. That I'm not saying Florida's going 9-3. and three. I'm just using that as an example. So I'm thinking about Oklahoma over the last couple of months during the offseason. I'm like, ah, 10-2, and two, I think. You know, Jalen Hurts, I don't think is good as what they're used to at quarterback. O-line issues. 
Defense year one, new coordinator is going to be improved, but you're starting at 130. Even if you improve it by 60 spots, you're still at 70. So, I, you know, I'm thinking 10 and 2, but then as I'm when I go through the schedule, I just can't find a second loss. So I'm going to put you at 11 and 1 again. I'm going to have you with wins at Baylor, wins at home against TCU, and wins on the road at Oklahoma State. It seems like you've had your way with Oklahoma State. Baylor, I think, is getting better. I still don't think they're back to where they were four, five, six years ago, whatever it was when they were actually competing for Big 12 titles. TCU is one of my favorite teams to watch within the Big 12 because uh, over the last 10 or 15 years or so, they've been the team that has the, that has had the best defense out there. I really like their coach, uh, Gary Patterson. He's been there forever. Uh, consistently gets the most out of what he's able to recruit to TCU. I, 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 I'm just not confident enough to decide really which of these four teams I think you might lose to. So I'm trying to stick to the same rules I apply to myself on every single preview video that I do. And since I can't really, you know, pick one of these four out to say, yeah, that's that's really where I think the loss would come. I'm going to give you a win in all of them. And I've got you at 11 and one again. All right, that's it. Now, I'll admit uh, of the previews I've done so far, uh, and I think this is the fourth one. This is like I mentioned, this was the hardest one for me to do because of the last four games on that schedule. And the fact that I, I just really question whether Oklahoma is as good in 2019 as they were in 2018. And I just feel like they're going to go 10 and two, but I just I can't find a second loss. Listen, you could beat Texas and lose to um, Iowa State and TCU or something. I don't know, but. I, like I said, I'm going to stick with 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 sort of my gut there. Going to give you an L at Texas, which I know you hate. That's your big rivalry game. Now, if it worked out the same way it worked out last year, I'm, you know, OU fans would gladly trade a regular season loss to Texas for a win over Texas in the Big 12 title game. And I do have a feeling that we're going to see that rematch again this year in the Big 12, although I give Iowa State a little bit of a chance there. Um, in the Big 12 too, but I'm gonna I, I'm, I'm gonna stop it there. I could ramble on. I feel like I'm trying to justify what I'm doing here. Oklahoma 2019, 11 and one. All right, that's it. I appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoyed the video, share it somewhere: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Go to your neighbor's house, knock on his door, show it to him, tell him to subscribe to Uncle Luke. Doo. Uh, yeah. But hey, I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you again real soon. Have a great morning.